Hello everyone, welcome to today's video, a continuation of the hyperpigmentation journey. Today is all about Suspera. I decided to make a separate video on Suspera because there's a lot to know about this treatment and it also has a very specific way that you would incorporate it into your skincare routine. So I wanna go over that in detail as well as indications, contraindications and how it works. Before I get started, if you wouldn't mind liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, that would be extremely helpful to my channel. And if you're interested, head over to my website where you can sign up for my newsletter if you like. And now that I've said all that, let's get started. Suspera is a great alternative to hydroquinone for treatment of hyperpigmentation and it doesn't have long-term side effects like hydroquinone does with pseudoocrinosis. So why isn't it super popular and talked about by everyone when it comes to treating hyperpigmentation? Well, the answer to that is probably twofold. The first legitimate reason, well, they're both legitimate, but the first real reason is that it doesn't actually work for everyone and it is quite pricey. So you could invest in this uh, treatment and not see a result. So that is one reason you, you take a chance when you try it. On those people that it does have an effect on, the results are beautiful. And the second reason, it smells like sulfur. So it's unpleasant to use, but you only keep it on your skin for 15 minutes before you wash it off. So that may not be for everyone. The advantages of Suspera are that you can use it on the face and the body. It does not make you photosensitive. It's effective and safe on all skin types, and it treats nearly all types of hyperpigmentation except for the deeper melasma type of hyperpigmentation. And if you're not sure what type of hyperpigmentation you have, if you go get assessed by your dermatologist, they will be able to tell you what is the root cause of your hyperpigmentation, which is always a good thing to do. It's always good to assess and find out what's causing the hyperpigmentation. So if there are any underlying uh, medical conditions causing it, hormonal abnormalities, those can be addressed uh, before the skin condition can be addressed. Now, the downside of Suspera is that it stinks like rotten eggs, it is quite expensive, and so you have to be careful if you find a less expensive knockoff because Suspera is cysteamine, and cysteamine is not a stable molecule. So the incredible thing about Suspera is that the formulation is a stabilized form of cysteamine, and that's why it's so expensive, and that's why it's effective. If you find a cysteamine product that's half the price, there's a very good chance it's not a stabilized molecule and you may find that it just doesn't work on your skin. So it's always good to look for the brand name of this product. It is an over-the-counter medication. However, it's not that easy to find. If I find a link for it, I will link it down below in this video. You can also find it at med spas and dermatology offices. And as I mentioned before, you never know if you will be one of the lucky ones that it works on or one of the few that it doesn't. It's really just like hydroquinone in that sense. Some people get beautiful results. Other people complain that it really didn't do anything for their skin. So everything is trial and error. And that's why the beauty industry has so much selection. Some things just work better for some than for others. Now, what is cysteamine? It is a molecule that is actually produced by the human body and it inhibits, it has multiple mechanisms of action, one of which is inhibition of the tyrosinase enzyme in the synthesis of melanin. Another one is that it alters the pathways to produce more pheomelanin than eumelanin, which is a lighter color. And it's been suggested that it may upregulate the synthesis of glutathione, which is a very powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory molecule in our body. Now, Suspera can cause redness and irritation. So to minimize that, the vehicle of the product is actually shea butter. So it comes in a cream form. And there are other ingredients 
within this formulation that also help reduce hyperpigmentation. And they include vitamin C, vitamin E, and niacinamide. Now, there is fragrance in here, and that is to mask the rotten egg stinkiness of the formulation. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, you may be sensitive to this ingredient. In addition to being a tyroxinase inhibitor, it is also a DOPA oxidase inhibitor, as well as a peroxidase substrate inhibitor. So it acts on multiple steps of the pigment production pathway to minimize pigment synthesis. Now, as I mentioned before, it can cause dryness, redness, and irritation. So now let's go through how to use it and how to minimize those side effects. The way you incorporate this product into your skincare routine is by using it one hour after your skin has been wet. So you have two options here. You can wash your face and leave it for an hour and then apply the Suspera cream, or you can, at the end of the day, just apply it on top of your makeup, your sunscreen, everything that you have on, put it on like you would a mask, leave that on, and then wash it off and proceed with washing your skin and proceeding with your skincare routine. Now, you can spot treat with Suspera, although they recommend you apply it to the entire face. You apply it for 15 minutes and then you wash it off. You do this nightly for 16 weeks. And after 16 weeks, it's a maintenance treatment of once to twice a week. You can expect to start seeing results about eight weeks after starting the treatment. If you are sensitive and if you have a tendency to get dry and irritated, then what's recommended is that when you apply it, you don't apply it and leave it on for 15 minutes, but you start off with five minutes. After five minutes, you wash it off and eventually you, over time, you build up to 15 minutes. When you apply it to the skin, it tends to feel warm and tingly. And if you choose to apply it to the body, they recommend that you dilute it with a hydrator. So you would take equal parts, let's say a pump of the Suspera with an equal amount of moisturizer, mix that together and then apply to the skin. And again, keep it on for uh, five to 15 minutes, depending on sensitivity and the Research has shown that if you keep it on longer than 15 minutes, you don't affect the effectiveness of the treatment, but you do increase the side effect profile of increased irritation and sensitivity. So 15 minutes is really the maximum. And if you're developing sensitivity or you start off with sensitivity, you wanna just scale back the time, but still use it on a nightly basis. The great thing about Suspera is that you wash it off after 15 minutes and then you can proceed with your usual skincare routine and most active ingredients in your skincare routine are not contraindicated with Suspera so it doesn't interfere with your other lightening agents that you incorporate into your skincare routine. If you would like to incorporate other in-office treatments while you're on Suspera, like laser treatments or chemical peels, you can do that, but you do have to stop the Suspera a few days before the treatment and a minimum of two weeks after the treatment. The skin has to be completely healed before resuming Suspera. Just make sure you tell your doctor that you're on Suspera so that you can establish a protocol for when to start and then resume Suspera treatment. As I mentioned before, the recommendation is a nightly use for 16 weeks and subsequent to that once or twice a week for maintenance. If you buy a tube, which if I remember correctly, it's $168, that tube should last you 14 weeks. If you use one pump per day, one pump is equal to 0.5 grams and the tube should last you 100 days which is 14 weeks and two days. So they're very precise in their calculation of how long the product will last you. Now, lastly, I do have to mention contraindications, pregnancy, breastfeeding, and history, whether it's a personal history or family history of vitiligo or vitiligo. If you have vitiligo, you should not be using Suspera. I hope that answers all possible Suspera questions. I hope you found this useful. If you have tried hydroquinone or want to stay away from hydroquinone, 
this is another alternative and it can be used indefinitely. It doesn't have a window after which you have to stop for safety reasons like hydroquinone does. So it can be used during the times you're off hydroquinone or just replace hydroquinone altogether. And it offers yet another possible ingredient to combat hyperpigmentation. I hope you found this helpful. If you've tried it and you've had positive results with it or if it didn't work for you, I would love to know. So drop me a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video.